Hi there, this is Vanessa De Berlay from Affiliate Marketing Mastery, where you can learn to earn a passive income. And I want to talk about email marketing and 12 best practices. A lot of times, um, I'm going to assume you know what email marketing is, and you're frustrated, you've been sending out sequences, and you're just not sure why people are not opening up your emails. And these are 12 different practices. Check them off, make sure you're doing these 12, and then you should see your email open rates go up if not double. Number one is make sure you keep your list cleaned out. If you keep sending emails to people who are not opening them, it kind of goes, it's kind of like an algorithm and the autoresponder is picking up on that so that they're just assuming that what you're sending isn't going to get opened. So, um, you're kind of hurting yourself by continuously sending to people that aren't interested in what you have. And you know, not everybody wants the information you have. That's just a fact of life. And, by keeping them on your list. Another problem is you're paying for those emails that are going out. Um, after you start getting into the thousands and your numbers keep getting bigger, your fee for the autoresponder goes up according to how much you use it. And if you're sending out thousands of emails that nobody's opening, then it's really just a waste of money as well. So you really wanna have them removed completely and clean it up. Now, one way you can do that in Active Campaign is Active Campaign actually will track the emails that don't open up and it will actually remove them if you ask it to. So that's another feature of Active Campaign that it will automatically do it. Some auto auto responders require you to go in and take them out by hand and it's much more cumbersome and time consuming. So that is a nice feature in the tracking part of active campaign. Now let's look at number two. You want to make sure you don't over deliver. And then what I mean by that is some people in email marketing say, Oh, you should get yourself in front of everybody every single day and you know, keep on emailing every single day. If you do that, think of yourself. Um, there's been people I'm sure that have emailed you every single day. You really get tired of seeing their name pop up. I had one person that was emailing me and I actually enjoyed their content. I was opening it, but then it was every single day. So it wasn't a treat anymore. It was like oh, another email. So if you just send two to three times a week um, and, and be a little bit inconsistent, then people will go, oh, there's an email. I, I was looking for one. I really enjoy their content. Um, I pretty much have mine set up to where every 10 days I send roughly four. So it is probably two to three a week. Um, it comes out that way, five every two weeks. So, But I'm not consistent in, in how many days I skip. I kind of mix it up a little bit. But um, just stay in front of them, but don't be in front of them so much that they start ignoring you and they feel like you're annoying. And number three, Again, do not send the email every day. So I just talked about being in front of them every day and now you want to be consistent. So you want to send emails, um, but not every day. All right, number four, do not email on weekends. Um, if you start tracking and looking at the uh, algorithms and, and your analytics of your emails, you're going to notice that most people do not open them on the weekends. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, pretty much skip those three days and only send between um, 11.30 to about 2.30, Monday through Thursday, you'll find that those are the best times that people will open up their emails. And if you think about it, that's when people are usually at work and they're, you know, they've got their work done, they're sitting there, maybe they're getting ready to go to lunch and they'll start checking their emails and there you are. Um, don't sell in every email. This is number five out of 12. If you sell something in every single email, again, I've had people, I've enjoyed their content, but then it was like, okay, what are you trying to sell me? And if people, you know, spread that out, there's the 80, 20 rule. If 80% of the time you're just sending content, good, valuable content, 20% of the time you're trying to offer them a tool or sell them something, then you'll find that that's a good balance. Number six, make sure you segment and tag your emails. And what do I mean by this? Um, even though you might not understand how to use it or how it's going to benefit you right now, do it anyway. And down the road, it's going to help you. So let's say I send out a lead magnet and in that lead magnet, I, I'm in health and fitness. And maybe in this particular lead magnet, I started talking about lifting weights. Maybe it was something I hadn't been talking about. I was into nutrition and shakes and maybe just getting out and exercising and moving. Well, all of a sudden I started talking about weight lift or not weight lifting, but lifting weights as part of the routine. And so I sent out a free lead magnet on how to 
um, gradually increase the level of your weights and here are some simple routine workouts to do. And people got the free lead magnet. They, they were added to my list. Well, I can tag them weights. And later, maybe I come across something else. Maybe um, I want to pull those people that were interested in the weights and send them just specific information like a campaign and not part of the continuous email sequence. And campaigns are more like special groups of emails that are more specific. And um, I can pull them really fast. These are all the people that liked to talk about weights. And here's a new workout program that I actually found that I could offer to them and sell to them as an affiliate program. <clears throat> so tag them, segment them based on interest, based on why they're getting on your list. So even though everybody on my list might be interested in starting a business, not every single person per se, might want to start an affiliate marketing business. Maybe some of them are interested in my email marketing and, and maybe some other things that all businesses need, but I can tag them, the people that specifically want affiliate marketing, I can cater to them a little bit in more depth than the people that wanted some of the other information, if that makes sense. All right, number seven, ask questions so that you get responses in your email. It actually increases deliverability. So if I ask people um, specific questions and they respond, that's kind of like having engagement on social media. If you think about it, when you post on Facebook and people respond and you have all that engagement, your ratings kind of go up. Well, it works that way in email. When you're responding and engaging, that kind of puts you um, up a little bit and you'll get um, those emails will definitely go um, have more deliverability rates in into the email boxes. All right, number eight, use stories. And the reason you want to use stories is you want people to get to know you and your stories and how they relate to different analogies and things that you're telling. People don't always want to just be talked to. Um, you know, if I if I wrote an email to you and said oh, I love these weights, and this is a routine I started doing, you got to try it, as opposed to telling the story of how, you know, I got tired of just walking every day, I wanted to up it a little bit, and I felt like I was too old, but I started out with two pounds, and I even sat in my chair, and you know, tell a funny story. I mean, could you imagine someone sitting in a chair with two pound weights? It's, it's kind of a, a visual that's ridiculous because two pounds are not much, but it happens. And actually I did do that. But, um, and then how I built all the way up to 12 pounds and, and I feel so much stronger and it took me this much time, but you can tell that story and, sh and tell the success that went with it. And then people were like, wow, if she can do that and she wasn't embarrassed to start with two pounds and sitting in a chair, then that's something I can do. So tell a story and it just makes it more relatable. Number nine, um, you will hope that one day you will have this problem, but warm up the IP. And what does that mean? If you have a list of emails, like a hundred thousand, you cannot send all hundred thousand emails at once. Um, it'll look like spam and autoresponders do not like that. So one of the things you can do is send out your emails in 5,000 increments. So you might send them out every so many minutes or every so much time in between and just kind of warm it up. And then that way it doesn't look like spam. Now I know some people when they start getting those huge numbers, they will actually go out and use two different autoresponders just in case one shuts down, they always have the other one that'll keep working. Because the, the bread and butter of your business is your email list. Um, I just got an email from somebody that, an influencer, um, I'm on their email list and they just mentioned how they just lost their account on Facebook. It was shut down, 25,000 people were following them on there and it just got shut down out of the blue, but they have an email list. So you have to make sure you build this email list. Now you might say, well, what if the autoresponder gets shut down? Well, it can, but you can also export those email names every so often. Make sure you export your list and you keep that in a safe place. And if it does get shut down, you have that list. You can import it into another autoresponder and that's how you own it. Um, number 10, make sure people can unsubscribe to your list and what and i know legally you have to do that but have you ever tried to unsubscribe to somebody's list only to find out they're still sending you emails i can name somebody right now i know i'm on their list like four times i've watched them i've it's an influencer i've signed up for a couple things and i notice every single time i click a button 
I, I'm back on the list new again, even though I keep using the same <laughs> email address. So um, I'm sure if I unsubscribe, I'm gonna have to unsubscribe two or three more times. So make sure your button works and make sure that people aren't getting duplicated into your list. Um, my list, I have it set up where they can only come in once under one email and the system will pick it up if it's a duplicate so that they won't be on several lists. All right, number 11, we have two left. Make sure you always have a call to action. Now you might say, well, you just told me not to sell something every time. Well, call to action doesn't mean to always sell something. Your call to action can be, hey, click this link if you would tr like to try this autoresponder, which I do have a link below. So there's your call to action. I could also be promoting my new Facebook group. Click the link, call to action. Um, I could promote, um, I could ask a question and ask you to respond to something that's a call to action. So see how the call to action does not have to be selling something, but I'm asking you to do something. I could just simply ask you, hey, give me a thumbs up if this was helpful or make a comment in the chat, the, the comments below and, and let me know what you think. Those are call to action. Subscribe to my channel. That's a call to action. I hope you heard all of those. I just gave you about six call to actions. Pick one at least. <laughs> all right, number 12, this is the last one. And this is one is really important, especially if you're new. Um, don't use swipe files. Now, what does that mean? If you signed up to become an affiliate marketer, when you go to ClickBank and you find that item that you wanna sell, they give you all their files, like swipe files and emails, like that you can just take them and copy and paste them in. And it sounds enticing and it sounds wonderful when you're new because you're like, I don't know what to do. But if you use exactly what they give you, it's called a swipe file, then so is everybody else. And it's gonna be picked up as spam because a lot of people are using that same one. And even if it doesn't get picked up, it doesn't really say who you are. So let's say you did five emails, we call it the soap opera sequence, when you're introducing yourself and warming up to your audience, those first few emails, and then all of a sudden you have a swipe file and it totally does not represent who you are. They're not using the same language, they're not using the same, vocabulary or anything and it just really throws things off what I suggest you do is look at that file take it and edit it you can still take that information use it as a guide and make it become you put yourself in there you could even start it out with a story and that really warms up your audience and lets them see that you're consistent in your emails so I just gave you 12 different ways that you can um, best practices for your email hopefully one of those will be something you weren't doing and you can start using that best practice and get those emails to get open. You already heard all of my um, call to actions. Give me the thumbs up, the subscribe, all that stuff. But um, you know how that works. Um, I do have, this is my real call to action. I do have um, some a playlist about email marketing and I've got the link below. If you're really digging in and trying to get your email marketing up and running, I have some uh, videos that I made and I put them together in an uh, an email list playlist and the link is below so definitely check that out so that'll help you with um with your email list